Welcome to the YouTube channel to CTTs in the Age of Extremes and Beyond. My name is Ivan Matiasic and together with Luca Iori we have organized this series of videos. On 21st June 2017, the online magazine Politico published an article Why the White House is Reading Greek History. The Trump team is obsessing over Thucydides, the ancient historian who wrote a seminal tract on war. What actually happened in 2017 is that the Harvard professor of government, Graham Allison, briefed President Trump and his staff on the Peloponnesian War, the war between Athens and Sparta and their respective allies, that waged between 431 and 404 BCE, in order to highlight the US-China current relations. Allison is the author of the provocative book Destined for War, Can America and China Escape to See the this Trap? He claimed that Thucydides, the Greek historian who described the Peloponnesian War, offers a key to understanding contemporary international relations when he declared that the rise of Athens and the fear that it caused in Sparta made war between these two ancient superpowers inevitable. As a rapidly ascending China challenges America's accustomed predominance, wrote Allison, these two nations risk falling into a deadly trap first identified by the ancient Greek historian Thucydides. Thucydides, of course, never talked about traps. In fact, there are a number of inaccuracies and plain mistakes in Alison's interpretations, both from a classicist perspective, as myself, and from the point of view of international relations theory, as pointed out by a number of reviewers and critics. However, this has not prevented the phrase Thucydides trap to gain international traction. The phrase was used by Allison for the first time in a 2012 article in the Financial Times. And it has been reported that already in 2013, China's president, Xi Jinping, told a group of Western visitors, we must all work together to avoid Thucydides' trap. It seems that Thucydides, who wrote the history of the Peloponnesian War 2,500 years ago, captured the attention of policymakers and leaders in both Washington and Beijing. If we take a cursory look at British politics, Dominic Cummings, one of the leading Brexiteers and current chief advisor to the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, also seems to be a keen reader and interpreter, in his own ways, of Thucydides. He wrote on 29 October 2016, there were many things we could have done much better, our biggest obstacle was not the in campaign and its vast resources, but the appalling and fighting in our own side, driven by all the normal human motivations described in Thucydides. Fear, interest, the pursuit of glory, and so on. In the light of these recent developments on both sides of the Atlantic and the Far East, regarding the ancient Greek historian Thucydides, it is perhaps time to rethink our own place as classicists and ancient historians in moulding the reception of Thucydides and the ways we cope with the uses and abuses of his historical work. If we take a cursory look at antiquity, the history of the Peloponnesian War was already praised and admired by ancient thinkers. Thucydides' historical method and approach represented the model for history writing, from his continuators in the 4th century BCE to the Greek historian Polybius, from the Romans Sallust and Tacitus to Procopius in 6th century Constantinople. The first Latin translation was completed in 1452 by the celebrated humanist Lorenzo Valla, while Thomas Hobbes produced the first English translation based on the Greek original. For the Scottish philosopher David Hume, the first page of Thucydides is the commencement of real history. For the renowned German historians of the 19th century, Bartol Georg Niebuhr, Leopold von Ranke, Wilhelm Röscher, Edward Meyer, and so on, Thucydides was the inventor of scientific historiography, an inspiration, a model, a forefather. Finally, and we come to the focus of our videos, during World War I and the short century that followed it, Erich Hosbaum's Age of Extremes, Thucydides' analysis of the great conflict that ravaged the Greek world in the second half of the 5th century BCE provided numerous incentives to challenge and interpret the current political and military situation on an international scale. 
The history of the Peloponnesian War was read in the trenches in France during World War I, studied with unfailing care by scholars and politicians alike in the 1930s, put on a pedestal in the 1950s as a tutelary deity of the North, North American Realist School, alongside Machiavelli and Sun Tzu, and even summoned, as described earlier, to provide lessons for Brexiteers, American policymakers and Chinese communists. The critical revival into CDDN reception studies in the last few decades has focused only on a limited number of topics related to the reception of the CDDs in the 20th and 21st century. The main scholarly lines of inquiry have concentrated on the CDDs as interpreter and forefather of international relations studies. However, there are other fields that have so far been overlooked and that our collective work will take into account. Our contributions will cover neglected geographical areas, at least in Anglophone scholarship, for example Italy, Denmark and Russia, but will also offer new and fresh looks on international relations and strategic studies from new theoretical perspectives and approaches derived from the social sciences. Our aim is to offer a wide and varied account of the reception of Thucydides within different academic traditions and political circumstances. But our efforts have also a civic engagement component. We aim to contribute to the critical examination of past and present readings of Thucydides, who has too often been used as a political auctoritas, a military strategist and a, and a guardian of universal truths. Contextualizing his interpretations, especially the most daring and questionable ones, or by quite often fortunate, is perhaps the only way to grasp not only to see his authentic message, but also his legacy in an ever-changing world that seeks reliable voices from the past to interpret the present. For more details on the structure and contents of our workshop, I'll digitally give the floor to Luca. On my part, I'd like to express my gratitude to all the colleagues and institutions that have in various capacities supported our work. This event was initially planned as a face-to-face -face conference. The COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted our plans, but at the same time given us an opportunity to think about different ways of presenting our scholarly efforts. Our hope is that these videos will represent the beneficial service to the scientific community and a starting point for other similar initiatives. Good morning, everyone, and welcome again to our workshop on Thucydides in the Age of Extremes and Beyond. My name is Luca Iori, and I'm research fellow in Ancient Greek History at the University of Parma, Italy. Since Ivan has widely covered the general scopes of our workshop, I'm just going to provide you with some specific organizational details about the program and the fruition of its digital contents. Our meeting is divided up in two major phases. The first one consists of the presentation of 10 papers divided in five different sections of two papers each. Papers will be clustered around some key topics which alternate between history of classical scholarship, textual exegesis, political science and international and strategic studies. As anticipated, our workshop does not aim at referring a comprehensive overview of the main trends in the study of the reception of Thucydides in 20th and 21st centuries. Our goal is perhaps easier but no less ambitious, and it lies essentially in opening and consolidating new avenues of research in an ever-expanding field, such as the afterlife of Thucydides. So, session number one will cast new light on relevant 20th century scholarly readings of a couple of thought-provoking portions of Thucydides' narrative. The first one is the archaeology, which will be examined by Timothy Rood from Oxford University, who is building on his previous work on the reception of this famous section of Thucydides' masterpiece up to 19th century. Then Francis Laurent, Anima Paris, will discuss the Sicilian expedition, pointing out the astonishing plurality of interpretation which characterizes this fundamental portion of Thucydides' work. Session number two will instead focus on a topic which is gaining a steadily increasing attention, that is Thucydides' reception in 20th century Anglophone scholarship. 
but early from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and even Matiasic from Newcastle University will thus compare different visions of Thucydides work developed by leading Anglo-American scholars such as Gilbert Murray, Charlotte Rivley Glover, Charles Cochrane and Jonino Powell. Session number three, we tackle an underexamined theme, the afterlife of Thucydides in fascist Italy. Dino Piovan from University of Verona will thus analyze the most important debate on Athenian democracy and liberty fostered by Gaetano de Santis and his most talented pupil, such as Arnaldo Mumigliano, Ardo Ferrabino, and Piero Treves while Luca Iori, that is me, will outline a liberal-oriented interpretation of Thucydides within Piero Gobetti's groundbreaking political laboratory. The fourth session will instead offer original insights into a more traditional field, Thucydides' legacy in 20th century studies on international relations. Hans Kopp from um, Ruhr Universität Bochum will present a paper on Artwig Frisch, a Danish eminent politician and classicist who used Thucydides to promote his own views on contemporary crises during 1930s and 1940s, while Liz Sawyer from Oxford University will illustrate the surprising trajectory of Sir Alfred Zimmern's translation of Pericles' funeral oration among international relation scholars. Finally, the last session will help us to assess pros and cons of applying theoretical models and experimental approaches derived from the social sciences to the study of Thucydides. Kunika Kakuta from King's College London will thus present his most original comparison between the political developments of the Imperial Japanese Navy and the Athenian fleet of the 5th century BC. Manuela Dal Borgo, Cambridge University, will reconstruct the strategies of conflicts in Thucydides' narrative by making use of theoretical tools developed by game theory. So, technically speaking, um, all these papers will be video recorded and released on Friday the 30th October on a YouTube channel dedicated specifically to Thucydides in the Age of Extremes and beyond. From that, from that date onwards, anyone interested will be able to view these videos anytime unrestrictedly. All that you need is to type the words Thucydides in the Age of Extremes and beyond on YouTube or more simply to click on the dedicated link in our announcements on academia.edu, on social media and professional mailing lists such as the Liverpool Classicist mailing list. More briefly, the second phase of our workshop will include a two-hour webinar via Zoom scheduled for Friday, December the 4th hours for 6 p.m. GMT. The guest speaker will be Peter Rhodes, Emeritus Professor at Durham University and one of the most distinguished scholars in Thucydidean studies. Ivan and I are deeply grateful to Peter for accepting our invitation. Professor Rhodes will present a paper that will be both an introduction to the webinar and a summary of the uploaded videos. This will be followed by a discussion open to anyone interested and to participate, you will just need to express your interest by contacting us via email and you will find our institutional addresses at the bottom of the program. Obviously, attendance is free of charge. Last but not least, we intend to publish the proceedings of the workshop and we hope to have the edited volume issued by winter 2021. The proceedings will collect not only papers delivered during the conference, but also essays kindly offered by colleagues who have accepted to participate uniquely with the text for publication. Thus, Ettore Cinella from University of Pisa will write about Thucydides in 19th and 20th centuries Russia. Virgilio Ilari from Catholic University of the Sacred Heart, Milan, has already prepared an important article titled 
Thucydides traps the Peloponnesian War in American political rhetoric and in senior military education. Carlo Marcaccini from School of Military Aeronautics, Giulio Due, Florence, will deliver an article on Gem de Saint Croix, Thucydides and the Search for Truth. And finally, Christian Vent, Ruhr Universität Bochum, will possibly contribute with a paper on Albert Thibaudet's La Compagne avec Thucydides. We are all sure that all these highly original pieces will significantly enrich our volume. This, then, is the general plan for our workshop. Of course, we are happy to answer any queries or doubts you might have, and so please feel free to contact us. Now it's really time for us to come to an end. However, before we start, let me sincerely thank once again all the speakers and the institution that have made this conference possible despite difficulties imposed during the pandemic. The Institute of Classical Studies, University of London, Newcastle University and Palma University. To them goes our gratitude. As for the rest, we hope you will enjoy this event and you will participate in large numbers to the webinar scheduled on December the 4th. Thank you all for your time and see you soon.